but it's good. All right. So once we get to a minimum of power connected and the uh, DB9 to USB connector, you can then start provisioning it um, and set up an IP for it and get it on your network. Um, you can open uh, any terminal emulator you want. There should be several installed on there. Um, I like to use TerraTerm myself. Um, that's my, my favorite one. You can use HyperTerminal. I think you guys got XP, so that might be on there. Um, you can use Putty. A lot of people like that one. Uh, for my example, if you want to follow along, I use TerraTerm. Um, whatever you're using, you should be presented with some type of interface on as to what port you're going to connect to. Um, at a minimum. So first you need to find out what COM port your USB to DB9 connector is at. Um, if you're not sure, it should say prolific in the list there. Um, for example, on serial ports, I should see some, something that says USB to serial or something prolific. Um, I know that because I've used that adapter before. The best way to find out what serial port, if, you, if you're using PuTTY or something and you have to type it in like that, uh, go into your control panel on Windows and should be under system I think if you're on XP and you want to get to the device manager and if you look in here under ports com and LTP and expand that you can see I have com1 um, you should have something with a prolific or a USB to DB9 and that's going to be the com number that you're using so I'm going to connect, you're going to see a black screen, don't uh, freak out, it's normal. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to telnet into mine because I don't have a physical connection, so uh, don't pay attention to my connection settings. All right, so when you connect, you're gonna have this really fancy black screen. If you hit enter, you should get a password prompt if you don't have it. If you don't get any prompt, let me know or Daniel know. All right, so when you uh, log in, the password is uh, DPS Telecom, all lowercase. All one word. So that's the default admin password for um, the G5. All right, so um, this is basically our TTY interface that we talked about earlier. Um, we're going to kind of go into it a little bit here <coughs> and uh, configure the IP address. So we got everything connected up, um, connected to the craft port. Mine just timed out right now. Let me get that back up. So you might get a timeout if you wait too long. All right, password, DPS, telecom. And uh, you'll get the main menu here. Um, it lets you know what your unit is, um, what firmware it's running, and build number. So it's running 5.5S, build 295. Um, we're going to do first thing is uh, set these guys back to default factory settings um, just to make sure everything's clear back to the default settings so we don't have anything from last class in there. Um, so the first thing you'll do to navigate this is hit C for config. And then we're going to go to E for edit. And V for NVRAM. And then you'll hit I for initialize. And this is how you get it back to default settings. So are you sure you want to do this? Hit Y for yes. It'll do its thing. Say complete. <coughs> then just hit escape. And R for reboot. Save your changes. Yes. And then after we do this, um, we'll set up the IP address. So you won't have to do this initially. Uh, we're just doing this to clear out any settings. I haven't uh, pulled some of those out. So I just want to make sure everything's cleared back. 
So if you did just open it up out of the box, this is what, so uh, I'm on the main menu here and I'm going to hit C for config. And then after C, you're going to hit E for edit because we want to edit something. And the list of options here, uh, we want to change uh, IP address, so we're going to hit E again for Ethernet. Um, you should be plugged into Net1, so we're going to configure Net1 by hitting 1. All right, so you're presented with this screen here that shows uh, what the IP is currently and uh, what you're going to be changing it to. So you'll hit U to change the IP address, mine is 192.168.1.100. My, and then hit S for subnet, type that in, and, and so on. G for gateway, 192.168.1.254. I'll hit escape, and uh, I think, I think uh, mine didn't change, so it's not going to ask me. But uh, if you hit escape, it'll uh, ask you if you want to save. But Y for yes. Yeah, one, I think it's two escapes. Uh, just escape told to ask you, I guess. And then uh, go ahead and hit Y for yes. Yeah, and it, maybe it's more than two. I can't. I know you got to back out a couple times. Yeah, and then it'll ask to save. Yep. So it'll write that. Okay. So right now what it's doing is writing to the non-volatile memory, so you can power cycle it, whatever. It'll keep that information. Oh, okay. Okay. Then hit E for edit again. Yeah, it's just saying until it's oh, rebooted, so okay. now you go to R reboot. Because you wouldn't want to change IP settings while you're still connected to the unit, like if you're telneted in. You wouldn't want it to instantly change, because then you wouldn't be able to access it maybe. So you want to keep configuring, and then rebooting will then recall all that information you just saved, and then apply it. So oh, yeah, yeah. So some things you wouldn't, like I said, you're, especially when you're messing with IPs, you don't want to necessarily just have it change right away, and then you can't access it anymore. So that'd be bad. So just to make sure everyone's able to connect, we'll uh, ping our unit now. Because um, you might have to set a static IP on the, I think everyone should on their NICs already, right, in their computer. I don't know. So you should be able to ping your unit by opening a command prompt type ping and then space and then the address of your net guardian and see if you get a ping back. So we're going to telnet into the unit now. Um, we no longer need that craft, craft port um, configuration there. Um, so I'm going to telnet into it. You can telnet, telnet's kind of nice because you can be somewhere else and telnet into the unit this way as well because uh, it's on your network now. So uh, I'm going to open TerraTerm like I had before. Um, you can do it through command prompt if you want. Um, if you prefer that. I'm going to put my IP address of the unit and port 2002. So if you're using a terminal emulator, um, you're going to need the IP address. You're going to make sure the uh, telnet option is selected and then port 2002. So the IP, select telnet service, port 2002. All right. So when you get the uh, password prompt, DPS Telecom is the password. All right, so this uh, interface, like I said, we'll go through some of the options in this interface. It's a, kind of a basic interface too. You can do monitoring from it. Uh, you could do some config like we just did with the ethernet config. Um, another useful thing in here is uh, debug, which I'll kind of kind of go over too. Um, it's helpful to diagnose things, or if you call in the tech support especially, it will usually have you go through a bit of debug. Um, so have this thing spit out information, see where it's failing, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm going to hit C for config after I log back in because it timed out. All right, C for config. Um, so you're going to have a couple options here under the config menu. You're going to have edit. We already kind of went into that. It's to change uh, settings like the Ethernet connection and all that. Um, M for monitor, P for ping. Um, that one's useful if you want to ping from the NetGuardian instead of from your PC. So you want to maybe, maybe you can uh, uh, get to it, but uh, want to see if the NetGuardian can get to something else. Um, so you can have the NetGuardian ping from its location to something else. 
Um, stats page, tune modem, reset port. Um, the first thing I'll go into is M for monitoring. And you'll see a couple options here. Um, so you can monitor a few things from here. Um, there's A for alarms if you want to play with it, B for bass. So here you can see all of my alarms here are in clear status. Nothing's in alarm. So if you wanted to uh, see the status of any of the uh, discrete alarm points, you could. And it'll keep scrolling through. So it's a real basic interface, just going to be alarm or clear. If I hit escape, I can then go to relays with L, B for base. I can see what mode and uh, status of all of my controls are. Um, you're even able to operate the controls from here so if you have that, that privilege. Um, so if I wanted to operate, I would hit O, relay number one, I would type in. And you can hear my unit click over there. If I want to release, same thing. Um, one of the other ones, uh, ping targets with P. If I had some, uh, you can set the net guardian up to ping uh, other devices. And uh, if it doesn't hear something back, it'll give you an alarm. So maybe the network device went down. Um, so you can have, uh, think up to 32 different ping targets. So you can ping up to 32 devices. It'll tell you whether it's uh, clear or an alarm. So if it's not able to ping something in your list, it'll give you an alarm. No, here you wouldn't. That's that's what I was saying. It's kind of limited on what you can change in here. This is more of I'm in monitor mode right now, so I'm just seeing what's happening right now. Is uh, mainly what this is. So I'm just seeing the status of everything. Yeah, two five five just means that it has no no address. It's basically yeah, nulled out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right now it's default settings. There's no IPs in here. We initialize units, so it's basically like we just got out of the box from the factory. There's nothing configured. <laughs> All right, if I back out of that, I'll get back to my edit, monitor, ping, stats. Um, another one that's uh, important, if, especially if you call in to tech support, they might ask you to hit S for stats. Um, this will tell you a lot of information about the unit, um, what product it is, what version firmware it's running. Um, Clock is at 150 megahertz, build number, whether the NVRAM passed its test, uh, how many boot ups, this one's been booted up 444 times, uh, its current uptime has been 30 minutes, 53 seconds, um, calibration, uh, board ID, uh, a couple of things that we use here to identify the unit, all that kind of stuff, so um, a couple things in there that you might get asked to, to look up if you're uh, on the phone. And I'll hit escape, and I'm back to my main menu. Um, another major menu you might go into is uh, D for debug. So I'll hit D. <laughs> so you guys should be able to go into here, and what this is is basically a list of debug filters. Um, Basically, if we had all the debug going on at one time, you wouldn't be able to see what the heck's going on on this thing. We have we insert tons of output on this thing. Um, so we have these little filters to just uh, send out the information that we're looking for. So if I just want to see HTTP traffic, um, alarms, see if the alarms are working, all that, I can filter out what I want to see and what I don't want to see. So all these filters say off right now. Um, if I wanted to, uh, for example, see the LCD, for example. It's in a closet back somewhere. I want to see what's going on in the LCD. I can hit uh, capital L, and it'll show me exactly what's on the LCD, the unit right now. So you can see line one, line two. So it should match up with what's uh, showing up on the LCD. So if you hit capital L again, it should turn it off, and I'm no longer getting that debug. And if you hit question mark, you can get the list of filters again. And uh, in the user manual, it says what all these filters are. They're kind of cryptic. Uh, some of them are only, I mean, they're only like three, four letters. So um, another one is if I wanted to look at the LEDs on the front of the unit, I could hit lowercase l. And you'll see RG, which is red green. So I can see if there's traffic on one of the lights, maybe the serial ports I'm monitoring or something like that. Uh, those are some cool little debug options you might find useful to use on everyday use. I don't know. 
to pick. Lowercase l again, I turned it off. The question mark gets me back to the menu. Um, let's see. Um, I can hit analog, so capital A will give me analogs. Um, some of this will mostly be useful for uh, tech support. Um, it gives us the calibration offsets and all that kind of information. Um, what values it's getting and all that. Uh, so that might be useful if you're, maybe it's, it seems like it's not calibrated, then we'd be able to tell through this interface. And it also tells you if all the analogs are reading correctly, if they're working correctly. Um, another one is lowercase a. This will go through all the alarm banks. You can see I got one of my discrete points is an alarm. That's why I got a one. So that, that's a good way of uh, finding out if uh, the actual hardware is working is more what that's for. Uh, you wouldn't really want to use that for monitoring purposes. Uh, it's mostly just to see if the, the hardware itself is working. Um, so we got a list of uh, other options there. Um, like I said, they go more in depth in the user manual, so uh, feel free to play with that at some point. Um, right now I'm going to hit escape back out of that. And uh, that's that's most of the main features of the, the TTY interface. So you can do some monitoring in there, you can uh, configure a few things in there. Um, it's good for debug. Um, it could do a few more things. Um, you could tell net from this device or a proxy. Uh, we don't really go into those in factory training, but uh, those options are also available. Uh, like I said, the user manual or there's how-to guides if you want to explore those options at a, another time. Or if there's anything you want to play with specifically after class, you can let us know. We usually stick around for a long time after class. You guys are feel free to do that if you want to go more in depth than any of these options. All right, so I'll exit out of that by hitting X. Any questions so far on any of this stuff?